And right now, we are two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romain Bostic alongside Scarlet Fu here to take you through the closing bells. Our global simulcast it starts right now. Carol Masser and Tim Stenovic joining us in the radio booth. Alex Steele has the day off. Welcome to our audiences across all of our Bloomberg platforms, including our partnership on YouTube. That rotation, Carol Masser, into small caps, out of big caps to a certain extent, continues for yet another day. Absolutely. A rotation, but I feel like we've been kind of back and forth, some hesitation in terms of certainly the S&P and NASDAQ in terms of what direction have it wants to go. So I would say volatility continues to kind of be back in, a, uh, in I feel like, a big way. You've got the VIX uh, going above 19 today. So uh, I do feel like investors are kind of trying to search for what yeah. is the next big trend line. And I'm well, trying to go back. I don't think we've seen it this high almost all year long, right? Right. I, yeah. It feels like it's been a long time, right? Yeah. yeah. It's interesting to see after yesterday, Romain, I know you were out, but I don't know if you heard there was a major sell-off. No, I didn't hear. the S&P 500. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, so the rotation, but it wasn't a yeah. rotation into small caps. That's yeah. the thing. So that kind of took a pause, but the fact that it's back on, I mean, I don't know, it was yesterday's sell-off of harbinger of things to come or just sort of a one-off? You know, yeah. if you put it in context, yes, we extended yesterday's sell-off, but now the S&P 500 has fallen for six days in the last seven. Um, you look at a chart and it's starting to look definitely like we've plateaued and maybe um, we have definitely reached that inflection point. Yeah, and just a clarification too on the VIX, we did uh, get above that 20 level back in April of this year here, but still uh, at an 18, yeah, yeah, but still at an 18 reading here, so, uh, some territory we haven't been in now uh, for about three and a half to four months. We get the closing bells here in New York. A mixed day once again here with green on the screen, at least if you are in that small cap, mid cap, or cyclical space. The Dow Jones Industrial Average higher by more than 80 points or about two tenths of a percent. The S&P taking a leg lower down about a half a percent. The NASDAQ also lower by about nine tenths of a percent. The NASDAQ 100 down more than one. As for those cyclical names, Dow Transport's up 1.3 percent. The Russell 2000 up by a similar amount, 20 eight points or about 1.3 percent on the day. I might remind everybody too though we're still up what I think more than 30 percent since that October low back in 2023. Having said that Scarlett today you've got 290 names in the S&P 500 gaining ground 211 to the downside two unchanged. All right let's take a look at the sector performances because you'll see the heaviest weighted sectors uh, doing the worst. You've got communications uh, services down 1.9 percent technology losing 1.2 percent utilities. Okay not a heavily weighted sector but down nine tenths of one the ones bucking the decline, energy up 1.5%, industrials and financials and materials. So again, some of that cyclical flavor coming back. And just worth noting here, uh, for the Russell 2000, all 11 sectors in the green. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys, uh, let's get to some of the individual gainers, if I may. Um, ServiceNow, it is your number one gainer in the S&P 500. Stock up uh, almost 14% here, jumping the most in more than 12 years. That was at least on an intraday basis. Got to check here at the close, reporting better than expected quarterly sales and bookings that signaled strong consumer demand for its broad suite of software uh, tools. So that was certainly an outperformer. Old Dominion Freight, uh, mm. finishing the day off its highs. It was up 8% at its highs, finishing the day just shy of 6%. It was the number two gainer in the NASDAQ 100. Uh, the trucking company reported earnings per share for the second quarter that did top the consensus estimates and returned to double-digit EPS growth. Uh, analysts weighing in several, including Raymond James, BMO Capital, raising their price targets on that stock. And real quickly, Hasbro was up more than 9%. Mm. A lot of stuff going on, I feel mm. like, in the toy area, as we know. Uh, up more than 9%. Are toys back? Our toys, toys are back, but they're okay. also, you know, whether or not there might be some deal activity. We talked to uh, mm. the you know, Mattel cries, CEO yeah. yesterday and denied, yeah. denied it. Um, <laughs> but yeah. nonetheless, I feel like there's a little arc, right? The more they deny, the more it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, but it's just kind of interesting. We tried to push. Um, Hasbro, though, uh, it did beat expectations the second quarter. Also boosted its earnings forecast for the full year. Who pushed by harder, you or Tim? Uh, Carol did. I play good cop. I know. Oh, yeah. is that? Yeah. Oh. They have a strategy. Well, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, Carol, bad cop. I get it. Okay. <laughs> ouch, ouch. All right, I'm going to give it to the good cop now. All right, but I get the decliners. Uh, some really notable ones today. I do want to start with Ford. It's having its worst day since the depths of the financial crisis going all the way back to 2008. Shares falling more than 18% today. A big earnings miss. The automaker blamed it on a surge in warranty repair costs uh, for older vehicles. Recurring quality problems have driven up Ford's warranty costs for years, but yeah. an $800 million 
spike in the second quarter caught investors by surprise. I'm, I'm, so, I'm well, totally fascinated. And I, I think you guys had the Ford CFO on yesterday or something. You because, guys did, yeah. Um, I mean, John Lawler. Yeah, because I'm curious. I mean, this basically sounds like it's a Ford issue, like a production yeah. issue, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, and a lot has been written about it. I think yeah. our own Keith Naughton had a big story mm -hmm. about it a couple months ago. Um, but he called it a one-time jump due to quality-related issues. But the market mm. is not seeing this as a one-time thing. Yeah. And this is not happening just at one time. Yeah. So. You know, I bought a car yesterday. Oh, you did? did? You? Is that why you were off? Yeah, I did. Yeah. What'd you oh, okay. buy? Just contributing to the U.S. Wait, economy. What'd you buy? A Bentley. Oh, yeah. wow. That, that, yeah. It was you. That don't checks worry. out. Don't, it, was, it was you. <laughs> Save a little Just money. The maintenance costs, yeah. though, Romaine. Okay. The insurance um, costs. Yeah, we'll chat after the show. Oh, wait, I need wanna... insurance on that thing? Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk Chipotle. Uh, shares fall in 1.85% on yeah. the day today. Uh, this after the company said it'll spend $50 million on making sure that workers serve the right amount of food. We're talking about two generous scoops of rice and four ounces of meat in those burritos and burrito bowls. Bring it out. You guys know there have been those complaints about portion sizes, right? Yeah. Wells Fargo analysts last month, they came out with this note. They said that Chipotle's portions varied widely after going to 75 different restaurants and getting identical burrito bowls in New York City. Mm. So the company's listening, and uh, it's yeah. going to cost them. Uh, shares of Lululemon falling to their lowest in more than four years uh, after analysts raised fresh concerns about the company's ability to hit financial targets due to ongoing product execution and slowing active wear trends, yeah. falling 9% today. And finally, I do want to do an honorable mention with Edwards Life down 31%, yeah. biggest decline since 2000 when it yeah. fell 41%. Did you guys see this? Yeah, a huge deal. Yeah, the maker of yeah. heart valves reported sales for the second quarter that missed the average analyst yeah. estimate. Also announced a, a couple... Um, acquisitions for $1.2 billion, but investors not yeah. liking it. All right, we do have some earnings across the wire. Let's take a look at Norfolk Southern. The shares oscillating between gains and losses, though the company did beat on all of the major mm -hmm. metrics. EPS in the most recent quarter coming in at $3.25 a share, a big beat over street estimates of 2 88 on an adjusted basis it's 306 versus 287 on a revenue basis this is where a lot of the optimism is right now the company posting its first quarter of revenue growth in five quarters here and providing guidance for the full year of about one to three percent growth on the revenue side all right, we also have numbers out of Skechers USA. Uh, second quarter EPS, 91 cents. That is down from 98 cents a year earlier. Adjusted, uh, it was 97 cents, and that does beat the average analyst estimates by two pennies. Net sales of $2.16 billion, uh, weaker than expected. The consensus estimate was for almost two and a quarter billion dollars. So that might be why you're seeing the stock fall in well, after hours trading. Also, just worth mentioning here, Skechers board has authorized a buyback program, $1 billion of its own shares. Yeah, we'll see. If that does anything to turn around the stock but as you said still down about six percent here in the aftermarket stock in 2024 just up two and a half percent here tim okay we're going now to a decker's outdoor the company reporting numbers now uh first quarter net sales coming in above estimates at 825.3 million dollars beating estimates of 807.8 million dollars mm -hmm. sees fiscal year gross margin of about 54 percent saw about 53.5 to 54 percent our our estimates were at 54 percent so coming in line with expectations expectations. Sees fiscal year operating margin at 19.5 to 20 percent. Uh, saw about 19.5 percent. Shares up in the after hours about 1 percent. And it's interesting, too, because we talk about that GDP report that we got this morning, obviously a big bump in personal spending. And then at the same time, you're getting all of this commentary from companies saying that the consumer might be a little stretched. But then you look at these Decker's results, even the Skechers ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is pretty decent growth. I know it may not rise to the occasion for some people, but 22 percent for basically a shoemaker on a quarter to quarter basis. That's pretty impressive. And then again, you overlay that with what you were talking about, Carol, with Old Dominion and even the results we got on the yeah. Norfolk Southern right now. There's some bright spots here in this economy. It really depends on what you're selling. I think in the case of Deckers, um, they have been able to not cut their prices, not uh, discount their wares. So there, there's full price selling going on. And this is something that was expected. Yeah. And in fact, the incoming CEO talking about how fiscal year 2025, because this is the fiscal first quarter, is off to a great start. Hoka and UGG delivering fantastic first quarter yeah. results, contributing to the increased outlook Hoka, for the full uh, year. And the Santa, are they, is their strategy just like to have ugly shoes? Is that, is that it? That's Deckers, right? <laughs> yeah. Did you know that I'm wearing Hoka's right now? Uh, is that I did not, saying? but they are ugly. Are I, they I haven't seen them. About my shoes? And you have Uggs. I know that's a fan <laughs> favorite of Scarlet's, so right? Yeah. Yep. Teva, Sanuk. So rude. Yeah, Kulabora. Oh, okay, there we go. 
Sorry. It just shows consumers are still spending, right? Go back Could to the... Did you just call me rude? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? You're insulting his footwear. I didn't hear anything. Fair. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it shows, right, goes back to that GDP report. Consumers are still spending. We should point out that's backwards looking. Let's see what happens, whether or not that continues. But uh, always so important, right, in terms of our economy. So I bet... 880 a share on uh, Decker's right now. I bet Romaine has Uggs at home. I do not have Uggs at home. Uggs, I bet like those yeah. platform there, Uggs. There that are just no came Uggs out. in my household. Like <laughs> that, that, I, I, I believe there are no. There's some, there's no some Uggs crocs allowed in our household. No Uggs allowed in the Bentley. Yeah, so uh, exactly. I think no shoes good. in the Bentley. I got that <laughs> nice plush white carpet. Can't be messing that up. <laughs> All right, on that, that's a wrap, guys. Our crop platform coverage uh, on radio, TV, YouTube, Bloomberg Originals. You think Romaine will let me be the driver? Like, like I can drive him around in the Bentley. You can polish it. No hocus allowed in there. Okay. <laughs> no, indeed. Okay. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow.